this is going to be so long so if you've got a cup of tea this is part one of a two-part video because I just couldn't fit them all into one video that's how long it is part two is coming tomorrow so are you ready part one of a two-part yeah all of these fragrances in front of me wow come into my garden and let's see what we can play with Hi, I'm Gabby and welcome back to another edition of The Fragrantition, where here on this channel we talk scents, we talk fragrances. This is part one of all of my fragrances that I'm going to share with you today. So let's get into it, shall we? Let's start with, what we're going to start with today, let's start with the big guns. Let's, shall we just start with the Dior? Yeah, let's start with the Dior. Let's start with my most beloved hypnotic poison which is vanilla almond yep I love it absolutely love it it's beautiful it's stunning always be with me my next Dior that I want to talk about is Dior Vintage Diorissimo yes a lily of the valley oh if you've ever if you've not watched me before you know I love my vintage sense it's talking of vintage we have Diorissimo, which is a reformulated version. What Princess Diana would wear, I think she actually did wear this. It is a beautiful lily of the valley scent that is just adorable. It's, it's absolutely stunning. The next Dior, Miss Dior Le Parfum. This is, wow, one of the best ambery scents ever. It, you dress it up how you want to wear black attire it's just a stunning scent to wear with the next one we're going to talk about is one of my absolute favorites pure poison which is a white floral jasmine wear it every day it could be a signature scent for some this this is one that could be worn all year round and yeah it's, it's just one of those that could be worn all year round I absolutely I'm just smelling the cap absolutely love next it next we have the poison the well it's the potion it's tuberose and incense it is one of those scents that I just cannot be without do you love poison it's a scent that is polarizing Hypnotic, I adore it, absolutely adore it. And talking about another poison, Midnight Poison, it's the Cinderella. Yeah, it is the Cinderella bottle. It is, what one's that? Or just like, I'm just so distracted by everything that is in front of me. It is rose, patchouli, orange, and it's done to perfection. And it's been duped to high heaven discontinued but if you can get it get it it is just one of those stunning stunning scents talking about another stunner Dior Addict yeah it's black tie event jasmine night blooming jasmine with vanilla a sweet beautiful scent combined with the next one we have which some people call basic are you basic or are you just boring, if you mean you're basic? This isn't basic at all. This is classic, fruity, fruity, white floral. Actually, the queen of green scents. Dior Tender Poison. This, again, has been discontinued. And it's to everybody's dismay, really. If you can get your hands on it, get your hands on it. Speaking of... I'm going to pop that just over there. Speaking of ones that if you can get your hands on, I'm going to talk about actually Red Door because it's the only Elizabeth Arden I have. This is a powerhouse. It is majestic. It is strong in your face. This can anaesthetize people if you're careful. Yes, it will. Oh, just 
they'll faint if you wear too much of this. It's a powdery floral. So if you can, I would steer clear of Red Door if you don't like Red Door. Let's talk about another. Let, let's talk about this one over here I'm going to take. Sinner. It's the only fragrance I have from Kat Von D. It is <coughs> plum, fleshy kind of plum. But it is one of those plums that it's got a little bit of bite to it. So I absolutely love Sinner, which I'm going to pop over there. And I'm going to talk about another obscure one that, uh, that I haven't really talked about. And that is Gloria Vanderbilt, the original vintage. This is, <coughs> I've got something in my throat. This is quite a vintage powdery slightly peachy scent and that's the Sophia Groisman kind of like take on it. I'm going to talk about my range of Givenchy's. I'm going to talk about Dahlia Noir. This is the beautiful, it's a really bewitching potency of patchouli, tonka bean, a bit of a femme fatale, discontinued. We all love it. Why was it discontinued? It is it's bewitching. It's probably, yeah, it is bewitching. And the next bewitching scent is Ange de Mont by Givenchy. This is, again, a bit of vanillic tones with there, with the florals. It's dark. It's, it's got potency. It's got staying power. This is an older version. I love Givenchy Ange de Mont. I also love the also the flanker to Lanterdi and then you have Lanterdi Rouge. This is the only flanker I have in these two scents. This is the 50ml, this is an 80ml, I do believe. This is tuberose and pear, sweet tuberose. <coughs> oh, this is tuberose but with ginger. So it's, it, it, when it goes on the skin, you feel kind of like hotness, you feel hot. So yes, I do love those. And then going on to a scent that is completely different to those is Live Irresistible Delicieuse. This, my darlings, is just cookies and dough and sweets and macaroons in a pastry shop. I'm not going to discontinue that because I was going to discontinue that, but I'm not. Let's talk about the powerhouses from Givenchy. Organza <clears throat> and Amarige. <coughs> oh, excuse me. This is... These scents are probably strongest and potent scents that I have. Amarige is a garden of white florals, purple florals little bit of sandalwood in there as well, a bit of woodiness. This has walnut combined with the florals in there. I I love both of them and I still haven't got a bigger bottle of this and I need to get a bigger bottle of this. I'm actually toying with getting a vintage one because this is vintage and this is potent. So those two are very, very potent. Let's talk about a demure scent from Givenchy. Let's talk about Lange Noir, which is demure. And I think it's the last one. It's the most, it has sesame seed in and it is powdery. And it is, if you like Dior Om, you will like this as well. It has that kind of similar kind of vibe going on. Let's talk about a couple of others that I don't have many of and I have one in the brand. Let's talk about Diptyque. Now, I did have Eau de Sons, which I really do want. Had that in a travel size, so I need to get that. Ooh, just wondering what was down there. But I also have L'Ombre dans l'eau, which was, or is, or was, Lauren Bacall's signature. It is a green rose, the green vines. It is just stunning, it's majestic, it's vintage. It is like the picture depicts of a swan with wisteria tree um, by a lake. 
and you're smelling the fresh roses but it's got greenness to it as well the stems the leaves i love l'ombre dans l'eau and another one that i only have one from the brand of victor and rolf is flower and it is flower bomb nectar this is like a juicy sap this this is wow the this this is a juicy sap of a fragrance this is you know when the bees are pollinating the flowers this is what this does this just emanates sweetness it is but it has a gunpowder note in as well which makes it slightly almost different in the quality to the original flower bomb so i do love that immensely and finally i have from the house of yves rocher i have amber veil vale, which if you can get your hands on is beautiful it is if you love shalimar but it's it, it it's sweet it's sweeter than shalimar this is this is this is amber but this is resinous and strong and it's been discontinued amber veil vale by yves rocher Let's talk about this next one, which I'm going to talk about, which is Overlooked Rebel Perfume Osmanthus Floral. This is an Osmanthus based scent, but it has a slight animalic tincture to it. But the Osmanthus shines, it's bright, it's effervescent. And I got this from an Etsy seller, from a perfume seller. I love it, I really do. So that is Rebel Perfume Osmanthus Floral. And then this one is from Bolanle. This is called Bolanle. This is it's 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 comforting, it's cozy, it's 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 kind of like there's this woodiness, but there's kind of this baked feeling about it. A baked, you know, when you go to your nan's house and you, you get this smell of baked goods. But it's got woodiness to it. It's got backbone to it as well. Bolanle, I love this scent. So let's move on to the, a house. Shall we move on to a house of scent, a designer scent? Let's move on to Yves Saint Laurent. Let's move on to the big guns, shall we? Yeah, Bell Diopium, which is discontinued. It is peach. It is smokiness. It is fruitiness, floral. But the smokiness is stunning. Been discontinued. It has this jazz club kind of feel to it. I adore Bell Diopium. I mean, it was a disgrace. It was discontinued. The next one, Yves Saint Laurent Rive Gauche. It is the Aldehydic Sheepra Floral, which is much better than number five. And I have another scent, which is much better than number five, in my opinion. It is for that feminist woman that lived in the 70s that didn't care what people thought of her. And she did what she did and she couldn't care. You know, if you she lived on the left bank of Paris, the Bohemian chic part of Paris, as opposed to the right bank of Paris. The next one, Ivresse by Yves Saint Laurent. This is violet, this is rose, this is by the nose of Sophia Grossman, who I love. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love her nose, but I love her as well. This is violet, this is rose, this is patchouli, this is... Oh, I always think Greta Garbo would wear this. It's quite an austere scent, but it has this almost... What's the word? effervescence to it it yeah it's i adore it i absolutely adore it ivresse by yves Saint Laurent. and then finally we have black opium which is coffee vanilla florals it again it's been classed as basic but then you could be basic as i say it's just beautiful i love black opium and it was gifted to me and i'm forever grateful that it was gifted to me let's talk about the only mancera i have i was given this one and i bought one and i discontinued the one that i discontinued i decluttered the one i thought i would love let's talk about that the one i decluttered was velvet vanilla i thought i would love it but on my skin there was something jarring 
However, the one I do love is Rose's Vanille, which, let's face it, this is Ange in a bottle when I smell this. This is 50 Cents UK Ange. She is the queen of Rose's Vanille. Um, yeah, it's it was gifted to me as well, this fragrance. So, yeah, that's the only Mancera I have. And the only... Michael Kors that I have, which I did have two, but I've only got this one now, is the original Michael. This is a lovely tuberose scent. If, if you can get your hands on this, this is stunning. I, this is a vintage bottle that I have here. It's just, well, what can I say? Tuberose on steroids. It really is. Why this was discontinued, or was it reformulated? One of them, I don't know. The only TRNP fragrance I have is The Board, which again is a tuberose scent, but this is much, much more greener. This is green, this is... It's strong, it's potent, it's 100% natural, and um, it's, yeah, I love that one. I'm not going to get rid of that for love and money. Shall we talk about the next one that I only have in as a house, and that is Nina Ritchie. I shall have two. Where's the other one? I've seen the other one here. There it is. So, this is what would a nun would wear. Well, actually, a nun wouldn't wear. This is Lair du Tonk. This is what actually Joan Clock Collins playing a nun in Dynasty would wear. If you remember that scene when they were in Moldavia and there was a massacre? Yes. She would be wearing this. What was she? Sister Teresa or something. I don't know, something. And she was trying to speak French. But anyway, yes, Nina Ritchie, Lair du Tonk. And the only other one that I have, I did have a few others, but I decluttered them. This one I love is um, Jean d'Extas. Yeah. This is sweet. It has an aquatic feel to it. Um, has moderate longevity and moderate sillage, but I love that as well. Right, let's talk about a house that is very close to my heart. Um, Cacherel. Um, so let's talk about, shall we, the original Big Guns. Anais, Anais, or N-A-N-A. Hyacinth, purple florals, white florals. Oh, it's just, it's a nefarious, little mischievous fairy in a bottle. And it's, it's a gothic fairy in a bottle. I love this so much, I have a backup, but that's how much I love it. Vintage. This is a, I think this is like a mid-90s bottle, this is. So I love that one. But moving on to maybe more, if you are scared of that one, then Amour Amour by Cacherelle. This is a really lovely, fruity, floral, black currant. The fruits, it has some white florals. It has some yellow florals, I think. It's not as potent as an A&A, &A, but, or Anais, I know, but just as good. And I also think a big potent scent that is soft, but it hits you like a pillow. Noah, which I have in this actual, I wanted to show you because this is just in. Look at that beautiful scented tissue. And you pull out the bottle. And it's just the presentation is just everything. It really is. It's just, oh, yeah, I love it. Love it. It's musky, freesia, a little bit of fruit, but mostly floral. Um, it's, it's musk, but it's clean musk. It's ethereal. It has a little bit of coffee and a bit of coriander as well. Bit of spiciness. Vintage formula. And I have a backup bottle of this as well because I love it so much. I do love Cacherelle. I really do love Cacherelle scent, as you can probably tell. Um, let's move on to a flanker of an A&A, &A, the Premier Delice, which is a fruity floral. It's pear. It's cocoa powder. It's not as potent 
as the original, but it's just as lovely in my opinion. It is the good girl. This is the naughty girl. This is the good girl. So I love that one. So I'm just going to pop them over there into the back there. And then let's move on to ones that I've not talked about. Let's move on to, well, no, I have talked about them. These are big guns like an A&A &A and Noah. Lulu. Yeah, she is the queen. She is Louise Brooks, the 1920 silent film star famed on. And I have a little pure perfume of this. This is just incense, tuberose. Yeah, you either love it or you hate it. And I love it. The next one is, which I haven't talked about a lot, and I'm going to talk about it in a dedicated video, is this one. Scarlet. Look at the Art Deco bottle this is in. This is a pure, beautiful... I'm not going to talk about it, because I'm, talk, I'm going to dedicate a video to my Cacherel sense. Alongside Liberté. Yep, I'm not going to talk about that one as well, because that's going to be in a dedicated Cacherel video. Alongside... Hi, darling. Hello, baby. Alongside... My husband's just walked in through the door. He's there working, and I'm just here languishing no not languishing just in pure decadence this is eden and i love it so much these two are vintages the 100 mils this is lush dense thick forest again it has that kind of feel to it like an a and a has which yeah let's face it you either love that one or you hate it it's, it's a sense that there is nothing in my scent collection that smells like it. Let's go on, shall we, to the House of Serge Luton's, which is a niche brand that I have. So let's talk about the big guns, I think. I call it the big guns. Anything that's big guns is the best for me. Fleur d'Oranger, which is the beautiful orange blossom combined with cumin. You have to like spiciness. If you don't like a spicy orange blossom, you won't like it. It's not overtly strong, the cumin note is there in the background, but you have rose, you have hibiscus, you have a bit of citrus notes in there, but it is all about the orange blossom and all year round scent that is in particular, I would say. The next one, which is a beautiful frangipani ylang ylang scent, La Dompteuse en Cage. This is the... Uh, when the name is La Domptes en Cage is the caged tamer, but when I smell it, I don't equate it to that name. Um, so I don't know, it's a play on words, but it is beautiful. I layer this actually with a Bath and Body Works scent, which I will talk about in part two of my video, which is coming up in a couple of days' time. So this, yes, absolutely adore it. La Dompteurs en Cage. Next scent we're going to talk about from Serge Luton's is my, oh yeah, Fils de Joie, a romantic vampire. It is jasmine. I find the jasmine in this quite dolic, so it's really blooming just as it's about to the petals are about to fade, but dripped with honey. And it reminds me also of smelling night blooming jasmine at night. I would wear this at night. This is Mina in a bottle from the original. Dracula, or is it Lucy, one of the two. The next one was gifted to me. This is, no, this actually wasn't gifted to me. This is Nuit de Cellophane, which is what I call a lovely fabric softener shampooy osmanthus yellow floral scent. It's safe to wear daytime, safe to wear evening. If you haven't bought a Serge Luton's, this might be where you could branch out and buy. It's you but better, as I call it. One of those scents. The next one, which I'm looking for, oops, which was gifted to me, is Santal Majeskul. This is a beautiful rose and sandalwood scent. Yeah, it is quite stunning. It's, yeah, and I've used a little bit of it already. It's, 
It's one of those scents that I would wear on a grand evening out. Santel Majuscule I would wear. And this one, I wasn't sure if I was going to get rid of it or not, but I'm not. Baptem du Feu. This is, if I was sitting in a restaurant and something was cooking and something wasn't really nice or there was like, you just go into the bathroom and you can smell a little bit of the bathroom when you come out of the bathroom. I, no, I know that's a nasty way to describe a scent, but this is what this kind of like reminds me of a bit. I'm going to keep it because I like it as a point of reference. It, it, it does teeter on animalic that even is a little bit too much for me. And that's saying something. Finally, or actually not finally, because there's two more scents from Serge Tons I want to talk about. This one is La Vierge de Fer. This is what I call... It's... Yeah. It is a cold scent. But I conjure up the kind of... The scene I, the scene I imagine is a green forest with Sleeping Beauty and she is wearing this scent when the prince kisses her. This is like lilies. This is kind of like, and I th I think this has a, a kind of like a feel of austereness, but I mean, lilies equate to death as well. And although Princess Sleeping Beauty isn't dead, she is asleep for a hundred years. So yeah, that's how my mind runs. So I know, weird, isn't it? So that's La Vierge de Fer. And finally, yeah, this is tuberose. This is, but this is tuberose running on high gasoline. This is my Rocky Horror Picture Show scent. This is what they would wear, you know, a sweet transvestor, transsexual from Transylvania. Yeah, this is the ultimate dark tuberose scent that I have in my collection. Now, I've just seen a couple of other cacherelles that I'm going to talk about. Why did I not talk about them? And I don't know why I talked about them, but I'm going to talk about these two. Yes, I've never talked about these, have I? See, oh, I'm surprising you. This is, yes, I am. Yes, I am fabulous. This I'm decluttering without a shadow of a doubt. So if you love this scent, you love blackberry and heliotrope and nuttiness, you'll love it didn't work for me however this one paula bianca i blame you i blame you 100 percent, girl because i've actually used this much and i've had this a couple of weeks this is raspberry cardamom a little bit of white floral it is cozy everyday wear morning evening moderate projection moderate longevity is spray with gay abandon i don't care i don't know why i was sitting on this for too long Actually, I wouldn't want to be sitting on this, literally, but I don't know why I was sitting on this thinking about it. But I forgot to talk about these scents. And I also forgot to talk about Catch Me. So that's why I need a dedicated video to Cacherelle scents, don't I? Should I, should I keep this a bit longer? Maybe I should. I don't know. What do you think? Comment down below. So I'm now going to talk about the only Tom Ford that I have. Tom Ford Violet Blonde. Yes, this rains on all other Tom Ford fragrances. I don't care what you say, Tom Ford. It really does. This is a glamorous violet. This is a glamorous blonde wearing a violet corsage with a suede jacket. There I rest my case. And if she's guilty of sin, she's guilty of sin. Or if she's innocent, she's innocent. Believe what you will. Moving on, I am going to move on to the only two Chanel scents I have in my collection. And I've just picked one up and the top has come off. Now, there's two in my wish list I want. Number 19 and Coco the Original. However, Christelle, love Christelle. She is, yeah, she's a bit like number 19, but she's not as austere and it's not as strong as number 19. And, and the next one that I really do love is my number one favourite, Alu Sensuel, which is frankincense rose. It's resinous, like a bit of peachiness as well. 
I love my peachy, resinous, smoky scents. This has a little bit of Baldiopium vibes, but it's not like Baldiopium at all. But it's just like, I'd say about 30% kind of that same vibe. Man magnet this is, believe you me. It is a complete man magnet. Let's talk about, what shall we talk about now? Let's talk about one that I missed from Givenchy as well, because that's how I roll. Isatis. I forgot to talk about Isatis. This is a yellow floral, but it is strong. It's a powerhouse. Came out in the 80s. Very art deco. I love that scent. So we got to, you know, give a little bit of love to Isatis by Givenchy. Talk about is Want by D squared. D squared 2. Want. This is, yeah, I've said this before, you can hit your husband or your wife or your partner out with this. But it is ginger, it's a baked ginger and vanilla cake. And this was gifted by my beloved Ange, who gave this to me. Oh, the juice in that is incredible. This has really good projection and longevity on my skin. And I absolutely love it. The next one I'm going to talk about is this one, which is Theo Fennel, which is a jeweller. And I've never talked about this. Now, this is an animalic sheet prep, but it is on a softer side. If you love Bella Versailles, or dare I say Salome, you may well like this. This is on eBay as a steal, if you look for it. And I love it. And, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say any more about this, because I think this is going to be in a dedicated video that I'm going to talk about that. The only other scent that I have from this house is by the house of Armuff, and that's Club de Nuit Intense. This is Gothic Rose and Patchouli in a bottle, but it has this kind of sharp, but sharpness to it, but sweetness to it. Absolutely adore it, which I love. And the only other fragrance that I have from Marc Jacobs and because I don't like any of the daisies, but I do love my decadence. Yes, love it or hate it. This is plum and it's, it smells like no other. It, well, it actually does smell a little, a little bit like Aura from Mugler, but it's kind of like this sweetness, but it's, it's something about it, which I love. And the, on my wish list, is Divine Decadence, which I think works just as beautifully. I love that. The next one I'm going to talk about, which I only have from the house of, only have from the house of Jean Patou, I think. Yeah, I only have from Jean Patou, is Joy. This was Vivian Lee's signature. Some people love this, some people hate this. I get a lot of rose in this. And some people don't, but I think it's a real vintage. This is a reformulated scent, but it is, it's got this vintageness to it. I can see Vivian Lee wearing this and ruling with an iron rod when she was married. Was it to Laurence Olivier, I think? So we are now going to talk about the house of Mugler. Let's talk about the house of Mugler. Let's talk about Aura, which is a, similar to Decadence. Aura is one of those scents that I feel Maleficent would wear, maybe on a good day. But it has this, has some woodiness to it, it has a note in it. I don't know what the note is, but it has a note in which is like wolf wood or something. But it has a green vanillic tinge to it. It has this vanilla combined with green leaves. You have to love it. If you don't love it, well, you don't love it. You don't, do you? The next one I'm going to talk about is Womanity. Womanity. This is, and again, another polarising scent. This is caviar and fig. This is, well, I want to say caviar. It has this kind of like caviar feel, this accord to it, and fig and saltiness, this sweet saltiness to it, which I love and I adore, and this is vintage, and I adore that one. The next one we have is Alien, because I only have a small one here because I used up my 60 mil bottle, which is a vintage one, but I do have another sealed 60 mil one. But I have this, a reformulated one. This is Jasmine, Amber. You either love it or you hate Alien. But are you an Alien fan 
or are you an angel fan? Because I have angel in the eau de toilette version and I also have angel in the eau de parfum version. The eau de toilette is more, um, a little bit more sweeter, but I want to get my hands on the like, 2019 bottle because this is in the Comet bottle and I feel this is slightly similar to the original Angel. This is a powerhouse. I have this in many forms. This is the kind of like classic star bottle. Look at that green tinge to it. It was my signature for years. It'll always be a part of me. It'll always be a part of my DNA. And I should do a video which is sense that a part of my DNA, shouldn't I? So if you want me to do a video like that, I will do. So this Angel, yeah, love it or hate it, polarizing. Camp Alien, Camp Angel. I'm Camp both, but predominantly I'm Camp a Camp Angel. The next one, Alien Essence Absolute. I will not be dis I will not be decluttering this. I have another backup bottle. This is vanilla, this is myrrh, this is sweet. Um, but I will be dis I will be decluttering this one. Yes, the angel violet just does not work on me. There's something jarring in this, something I just cannot deal with and my husband's walking in with a nice cup of tea thank you darling that was a small cup isn't it you're gonna to have to get me a bigger cup I've got big one. well you've got a big one no you've got a big one wow thank you <laughs> well anyway my little snoopy cup which you know will be gone in like five sips five gulps so anyway thank you you're dismissed now so angel violet i cannot sorry so if somebody wants to buy that off of me dm me please do right and what else do i have in the house of mugla so this one i'm also going to declutter as well which is the alien oh extraordinaire this has neroli and I thought I was going to like this. It doesn't really last on my skin, so that is going to be decluttered. Is that all of my Moogla scents? I think it is. I might come across a few more. Who knows? But anyway, let's go on, shall we, to the house of Andy Tower. Let's go on to L'Air du Désert Marocain, which is this... A beautiful, dry, exotic, herbaceous, um, aromatic scent you can wear all year round. You can wear this in the height of summer or you can wear this in the depths of winter. I need to do an all year round scent video as well. This is one of those scents. And the other scent that I have, which I love and adore, is Carillon pour un ange, which is this lily of the valley but it's it's strong it's in your face lily of the valley with all of those with all of the nettles and the you know you're going to be you're going to go through the forest and you're going to get stung you're going to get pricked you'll get you know this is that kind of lily of the valley this is deadly lily of the valley in there which is discontinued and i love and i managed to get hold of it and i adore it with great passion the only Versace fragrance I have is Versace Crystal Noir. Yeah. It is what I call a va what I call a vampire on holiday by the beach. It has this kind of like gardenia, white floral. I get coconut in it, but I love it. My lights have gone off, which means I have come to the end of part one. That's how long these videos are because I actually did a video earlier filmed it with my lights and I didn't film the sound so if you want to join me for part two then join me for part two until then I'll see you in the next video bye <sighs> what a tiny little cup